Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we're here in growing zone 6B in New England where very recently the heat has finally broken and wow, so much better now. Let me show you what's going on in the garden. Oh, she is wild and she is lush and she is overgrown and she needs a weeding and that is just fine with me. This box here is kind of exciting um, because it's empty. So I threw a bunch of carrot seeds at it and none of them germinated and that's okay um, because I think I'm gonna put in radishes and spinach over here. Um, just do some direct seeding. The lemongrass is doing fantastic as is that lilac bush behind it. There is some dill that's still flowering and I'll bring some of that in and freeze it. There are some cosmos and some calendula that I'd like to harvest today. And the cilantro that wasn't supposed to bolt has gone to seed. Coriander seed is the spice I use a fair amount in cooking, so this is great. I'm just gonna bring it in, dry it, and stick it in an old spice bottle. This is the coriander seed. I just snipped it tight at the bottom, close to the ground. I'm gonna take this inside and hang it up to dry. And once it's completely dried out, then I should be able to put it in a paper bag and bang it around a little bit to separate the seeds. So really now what I need to do most is get in there and pull that grass out. Hopefully it won't take too, too long. so much better and according to time lapse it took me like 15 minutes to do it I have deeply upset a whole lot of ants so I think I'm gonna wait on my calendula harvest until they all settle down artichokes are coming along fine I was today years old when I found out that they need cooler weather in order to form the actual artichoke so I'm feeling good about this the sunflower is creeping up. It's got to be 10 feet tall at this point. Um, let's see. I was hoping it was marigold. Might very well be ragweed. I'll know within a couple of days. And if I've got to pull it, I'll pull it. Um, my volunteer squash looks like it's a pumpkin. She's nice and big and round. She's on that huge thick stalk there, giving her lots and lots of support. Y'all, this is one of my favorite things. The beans from that trellis have made their way onto this trellis. They are thick over there on the center trellis. And then they started making their way to the left-hand trellis. So fun. Is this borage not glorious? I'm so impressed with it. And it did it all by itself. My poor cucumbers are about dead. I don't know what is going on on this side of the garden. I don't know if you remember last year, we had blight like crazy on this side, but just on the tomatoes. Like all the other nightshades were doing fine. So I decided to put the nightshades, like all of them, just as a preventative measure on the other side. And this year put the curcubits over here. And something terrible happened. Like we got one really nice flush and then the, um, the bottom leaves have just started dying off. Might have been the heat. Um, might have been just, it's been very dry. Um, don't know, so long live cucumbers. I'll probably be pulling these out this week. My plant app tells me this is a melon. I don't know what kind of melon because I didn't plant it. The leeks are 100% tangled up in these volunteer tomato plants and I am not gonna fool with them. I fooled with them to get some grass out of here about two weeks ago, and what I got for my trouble was a whole bunch of dead onions. Um, so I'm gonna leave these leeks be. I'm just pulling them from the ground like as we use them. Here's the important thing, priorities. 
Oscar the cat faced tomato is doing great. So this looks like it was a Costa Ludo Florentino from last year or a Costa Ludo Genovese. I planted a different Costa Ludo this year than last year. So this is whichever one I didn't plant this year. It's a Costa Ludo though. Those beautiful accordion folds absolutely give it away. Most of my peppers just did not do well this year. And then there are these habaneros. Oh my goodness. And get this. And there are just tons of them. Tons of them. So these habaneros are doing great. Lib's going to get exactly what he wanted out of them this year. And then the tomatillos. Ooh, I know some of you are waiting for salsa verde. Looks like we should have it by the end of the summer. I told you, like, I didn't plant any of these tomatillos, right? And for the first time, I've got a whole bunch of watermelons coming in. There are a bunch of little ones in the middle and in the back. Y'all, this baby makes me want to change the orientation of my phone. Just look at her. Isn't she amazing? So this might be my very favorite spot right now underneath this bean arch. Sometimes I come out and I'll put like a rug down and just hang out here. I had to finally tie Bull up. She was demanding an awful lot of personal space and we just kept getting scraped by her and she's really pointy. I really like to sit out here in the morning and have my coffee or just a slow cruise through this garden and enjoy it and see what's going on. Nightshades. So many nightshades. Oh, what did you do today, Sue? Oh, I was just in my garden up skirting my plants. Look at all these beautiful eggplants coming in. And there's some stripy ones in the back there. Got Chinese string eggplant coming in back there too. We've got to talk about these spoon tomatoes. I know, I know, we mentioned that these were indeterminates, but yep, they are so tall. They're getting so tall. They're probably seven, eight feet tall now. Um, and we're bringing in fruit on these pretty much every day. They're these wonderful tiny little tomatoes. Uh, it's the spoon tomato from Baker Creek. Just brought in my first ripe Korean long yesterday. We've got a whole bunch more getting ready on the vine here. Super thrilled about this. And random active squash, probably pumpkin. Got some more tomatoes coming in over here. They seem to take their time ripening up. I do have a fair amount of shade in my garden, so it's going to take these folks a little while to ripen up. We usually don't get ripe slicing tomatoes until late in the season. Volunteers. And then the potatoes are just about ready to dig. I think Megan and Kate are going to come over this week and we'll do some of that. But they, they have all died off. They have all died off. I let them die off all the way this year. A little bit of squash coming in. These are some of our first blossoms. These are Boston Marrow squash. And I planted, just did some direct sowing. And I've got some acorn squash coming up. They're, they're very wee. They're very wee yet. This is where the chicken coop was. It's all starting to come together. We've even got some grass growing in the back there. Um, but we put in some shade loving plants. Bill's boss was kind enough to give us a whole bunch of these, the um, Lily of the Valley and the Hostas. These coral bells I picked up um, at the garden center. 
and then a whole bunch of coleus. There's a bunch of coleus in front that I propagated and they're already so much bigger than they were a week ago. So we've got three weeks, hopefully they'll fill in a bit. Um, the rest, the rest of this, we're gonna work on. We're gonna have to fill in a bit, and so there's definitely a trip to the garden center in this. Oh darn! Um, but we'll get it filled in. We'll get it filled in in time. Y'all, this back area here, she's a little wild, but let's see what's going on with the sweet potatoes. Something's been eating my sweet potatoes. Oh my gosh! Something finds these leaves delectable. I think these were the Murasaki sweet potatoes too. Oop. All right, well, oh, a whole bunch of the leaves on this side got eaten up too. Um, I put some of the vines on top and those do not seem to be getting eaten. So it must be something rodent-ish down on the ground there eating those. I'm rooting for ya. My one carrot, my one surviving carrot. I'm so proud of you, my friend. I'm so very proud of you. All right, so I was like, oh no, what's up with my beets? I think I need to I need to water my beets. I really blew it on this, but actually I think more likely it's time to harvest beets out of this box. Oh yeah. These beets are ready to go in. Woo! Look at that. All right, let's empty this box out. Oh, nice big one. Oh, nice. Not a big one. So we got some beets. Not bad, not bad at all. I'm gonna check on the golden beets and see where we're at with those. I see some that are shouldering up in here already. So yeah, it's probably time for them to... All right, let's see what we got. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. It's pretty good. Oh, the ones on the side are we. All right, let's see, let's see. Maybe some of these will have to leave a little longer. I'm gonna tuck that right back in. Yes, I am. Okay, so we'll grab these ones that are shouldering. Anybody else shouldering up? Are you? Do you see this? This is where a, where a chipmunk lives. He's made a big hole over here, and I, I'm a little concerned that they might be that that chipmunk might be eating my beetroot. But oh, there's another one. There's another one that's ready. Oh, they're little. They're little, but they were popping up. Can put those in in the canner. I think I'm gonna leave the rest of these in here. See if they get any bigger. Get these inside into some cold water, and we'll can them up this week, or if they last that long. These freaking love some roasted beets, so that could be happening this week too. So that's where we're at with the garden today. Now that we've cleared out some space by the beets and in the bucket up here and the weeding over by the calendula, I think it's going to be time to plant our peas, our mustard greens. Um, what else did I have saved up? Oh, radishes. I've got some radishes. Um, and I feel like there was something else. I'll remember it by the time we start planting it. Uh, I've got everything lined up on the kitchen table for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out today through this garden tour. I will catch you up soon. Take care.